Leading into Richard Power's novel Galatea 2.2, we come face to face with a basic human question, that of consciousness, and what is it that defines consciousness. As Lenzel say, conscious intelligence is all smoke and mirrors, and one of the questions that Powers is trying to get at in this novel is, are we doomed as human beings to simply uh, uh, only see consciousness as some kind of mystical thing that's beyond our comprehension? It's Lentz's problem from the very beginning, Lentz being the neural networks researcher that engages the narrator of this novel. Lentz puts it this way, we humans are winging it, improvising. Input pattern X sets off associative matrix Y, which bears only the slightest relevance to the stimulus and is often worthless. Conscious intelligence is smoke and mirrors, almost free associative. Nobody really responds to anyone else per se. We all spout our canned and thumbnailed scripts with the barest minimum of polite segues. Granted, we're remarkably fast at indexing and retrieval, but comprehension and appropriate response are often more on the order of buckshot. So this is this is the problem of the novel: is you know how do you understand consciousness? You know, can it only be understood? You know, through uh, in some kind of mystical definition or or through myth, and with with Powers' novel, we have this kind of interesting context here that you know he's writing this novel at the time that the that uh, the internet and and the World Wide Web are, um, are are proliferating and becoming more and more present in in uh, our common lives. And so one of the things that we can kind of untangle here throughout the novel is the ways in which the real and virtual worlds get defined here. So for instance, you know, uh, how do you define artificial intelligence versus an artistic or a, 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 the consciousness of a maker of things? Um, in what ways does memory define us? And so how does a memory of a, of a literary character define him or her? How does the, memory define the I is an important question within this novel, particularly with our, our first person narrator here. And one kind of, you know, mythical question you might, you know, put in the back of your mind as you read this novel is, is the robotic world becoming more human or is the human world becoming more robotic as time goes along, as artificial intelligence develops? And these are all kinds of associative questions that are at work within this novel. Power works through Power works through a first-person narrator, Ricky, in this novel, and Ricky uh, bears a lot of similarities to Richard Powers himself as 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 the novel goes along. Uh, Ricky is returning to a physical space within his memory, the the school that he went to, um, uh, simply called U, which is you know which stands for the University of Illinois at Champaign Urbana, where Powers himself taught for a long time. Um, as Ricky returns to this space and, and uh, returns as a, a somewhat successful writer, uh, he's trying to put together his memory of a, of a failed relationship with a woman he simply named C here. Um, he's also trying to figure out his position as a writer given the fact that he has a hard time recognizing what he's previously written. It all seems to be the work of someone else in Ricky's mind. And so as he's trying to put himself back together, you know, in what ways does memory play a role here? If you lose your memory, do you lose who you are uh, in the end? That's a, a central question um, within this novel. He meets Lentz, this neural network um, researcher, uh, and, you know, Ricky has an immediate kind of crisis. What does Lentz know that Ricky himself doesn't know? Ricky sees himself as the token humanist um, you know, within this research facility, and 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 Lentz is more what he calls the owl man. He's a researcher. He works in the middle of the night, almost like a, a Victor Frankenstein, kind of obsessed with his subject matter in ways that Ricky is not obsessed with writing. Um, and so there's kind of a question of who is smarter, you know, within within this within this space. Um, Lentz will ask the question: Is the brain an organ, or isn't it? And that's the you know basic kind of thing is do we see the brain as in its material basis only, or does the brain represent some sort of um, more than more than physical uh, thing in the end? Uh, and so the two come together and and devise this project where, uh, led by Lentz, they're going to develop a neural network, uh, a computer, 
that could compete with an English graduate student in literature exam. So they're going to test the computer against a particular English student um, and see who does better on an exam in the end. So this is kind of like the Pygmalion myth, right? That, or, uh, or, or the uh, film My Fair Lady, you know, the question of can you make someone, make something out of someone that, 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 that's unanticipated? Uh, can you make a computer uh, presence that is able to compete with the human in the end? And again, the historical context of Powers' novel published in the, in, the, in the 1990s is the World Wide Web is just taking off. So we're just on the cusp of October uh, 1994, that moment where the, the World Wide Web goes from a few dozen websites to you know thousands of websites suddenly. Um, however, the web is also starting to show its impact on human culture. Uh, it's creating, as Power says, a neighborhood that's more efficiently lonely. You know, the people are more kind of steeped in, you know, going online as opposed to engaging one another directly and physically. It sets up kind of total disorientation that's become the status quo in, in, in Power's world uh, in this novel. So the web in its influence on the characters here is important as well. So does Galatea 2.2 do you, can you read it as a novel of connection, of, of, of developing an understanding of the things that uh, define us and define our sense of uh, awareness within the world, our sense of consciousness uh, as, as a moment of connecting to the world? Or is it ultimately a novel of displacement, a, a sense that we'll never find those answers of what connects us and connects us to other people, that can, what connects us to uh, to 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 the wider world that surrounds us, and even to our own memories and selves, you know, um, are we are we cut off from those things? And that's at the core of this novel as well. To tell this story, Powers um, gives us a really complicated narrator, a really complicated I named Rick here. Uh, he's complicated in a couple of ways. First is that I think I've already mentioned that there's a line between the the fiction and the nonfiction here that gets obscured. The, the I in the novel um, really approximates Power's own experience. So are you reading a memoir here? Or are you reading a, a, you know, a, a fictional novel? You get, is this Power's story or are we getting Rick's memory as a character in the novel? At times it'll feel you know, both ways. So kind of keep track of that as you read. And more generally, you can think, though, the, about, you know, what is the role of, of memory in defining your sense as an I? Is your memory more uh, non-fictional or fictional in the end? When you start to put together who you are as a person, how much of that is, you know, real non-fictional stuff and how much of it is has been kind of uh, fictionally developed in your memory? And do we trust Rick's memory as this story goes along? Uh, one of the tensions here is Rick's level of displacement or disconnection in the novel, right? That they're going to try to create a machine that's going to pass for human. It's going to take these literature exams. Um, in what ways is Rick himself, you know, a human who's kind of passing as a machine in some ways? You know, he's wrestling with a sense of detachment from other people. And so in what ways is he being displaced or disconnected as the story goes along? And also we can think about the levels of trauma uh, that Rick has experienced as an artist or a maker. And what, what ways does that sense of trauma, uh, in what ways does he, is he, does he deceive himself through uh, those moments of trauma? So you can, um, as he tries to kind of recollect the past with C, you know, he asks, what chance does story have against neurons that generalize from a single instance? You know, the, the story itself, how do you put it together? against all the other possibilities that are there. How do you put together a love story? As he tries to reconstruct his past with C, is this a love story? He says uh, in, the, in the scene where they meet uh, and first kind of fall in love on pages 58 and following, I fell in love with a voice. Maybe that's all I ever did was echo her. And so in, in what ways has he been, um, is, does he display trauma from the breakup with C? This leads into you know the kind of quandary that that's going to define things throughout the book here. As, as Rick says, um, neural nets I learned had a way of casting themselves over people. My expert systems couldn't be called intelligent, but they did get me thinking about what could be. I thought about the question for a long time, even after I jettisoned the commercial interest. What was memory? 
Where, if anywhere, did it reside? How did an idea look? Why was comprehension bred or aesthetic taste or temperament? I came to the conclusion that I had in the foggiest idea what cognition was. Nobody did, and there seemed little prospect of that changing soon. Recursive by nature, mentation wasn't going to yield to measurement alone. So the question for Rick in the end is, you know, can you study, uh, can you study consciousness scientifically, or does it remain beyond uh, science's grasp? And how much of that is, in, in our context, you know, how much of consciousness of itself is mystical or mythic? You know, and what, and what do we expect from the technologies here? You know, do we learn more about uh, do we learn more about ourselves through the humanities or do we learn more about ourselves by looking at ourselves in a dissecting dish in the end? What can we possibly know? These are the kind of questions that are going to be at the center of, of Power's novel, and uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on them as we go along.